Hey foodies, it may just be me, but does anyone else feel like January was literally the longest month ever? Well, it's coming to an end, and this past weekend, I got to meet this week's guests in person, which was super fun. Allison Ellsworth, entrepreneur and co-founder of Better For You soda brand Poppy, had a pop-up store in LA this past weekend, and it was pretty wild. Paris Hilton was on the DJ, and she's a literal princess, so I was only a little bit jealous. There were many stars that had appearances, and of course, some poppy-inspired cocktails. The product launched in March of 2020 and received a deal from an investor on Shark Tank. Ellsworth shared some funny anecdotes about her time on the show, spoke on gut health TikTok, and divulged on her best-kept entrepreneurial secrets. Keep in mind that we recorded this pre- the new year. So that's why we are talking about the upcoming 2024 a good amount. So please welcome the lovely Allison Ellsworth. I love that you have Poppy right next to you. (laughs) At all times, always Poppy. It's like, I genuinely drink like four a day like it's not (laughs) like it it, it's a problem no (laughs) no I've been drinking it too they sent me I have my cases right over here and I've actually I really like it I've been drinking it the watermelon flavor is my favorite right now but I'm working my way through so good it's so good that was like a summer one it's so good oh yeah yeah I was looking through all of your flavors but we'll get into all of that a little bit later but Thank you so much, so much for coming on um, and taking the time out. I appreciate it. I'm excited to get into your business and your background and all that good stuff. So it should be fun. Yay. I also love your pink wall behind me. I just have like one painting, but you have such a vibrant pink wall. So I really like it. (laughs) Our office is bananas. This is actually like our chill room. Um, No. Oh, okay. Is it all colorful because your cans are colorful? Yeah, I have like our conference room is like a bubble world and like we have a raspberry room and an orange and like it's really fun oh that's so cute i'm sure that makes everyone a little bit more energized <laughs> than a white wall. <laughs> so before we get into your business i want to get into your background a little bit what were you doing before you became an entrepreneur yeah so it's kind of crazy it has absolutely nothing to do with beverage um but previous to this i worked in oil and gas research um, oh, very I, different. <laughs> very different. I, I was actually on the road for about seven years, literally driving across the U.S. by myself. Um, and it kind of stemmed from like the reason of why I started Poppy because I was on the road, didn't have access to good food or really good places to work out. And it really did a toll on my body. Yeah. So you were kind of traveling all around the U.S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Living in hotels like for seven years. Yeah, that's a fun lifestyle if you are equipped to it and you want it. <laughs> well, it, it wasn't as glamorous as you would think. Like when mm-hmm. I say traveling, it's like when you're working at oil and gas, like you're in like teeny little towns. So the closest grocery store is like 30 minutes. You're in a town of a thousand people living in the mm-hmm. motel. So this is not like, oh, you're in like New York City getting to like live your best life as a youngin. It was definitely um, a trek. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Did you have your family at the time or you were, no? No, yeah. So that's the beauty of it. So when I was traveling and doing this, uh, that's when I met my now husband. Um, We were actually ran into each other at the mall and he asked for my number. And it was like Mm -hmm. one of those things that's like a perfect like meet cue moment. And once we went on our first date, we were inseparable. And after that, I was like, you have to come work with me. I'm traveling. And so he came to come work with me. We ended up living in a teeny town and we lived in Wyoming and Utah. And then that's when I started Poppy. It was just like kind of with him and using him as a guinea pig. Oh, that's so cute. And now he's your business partner, right? Exactly. Yes. Everyone always says we're crazy, but we 100% still work together. His office is next door to me and we make it work. We love it. Yeah. No, I don't think you're crazy. I've, I've talked to a few people who are, are married and they've created the business, especially in media or like an entrepreneur kind of sense. They've been able to do it as long as you balance the responsibilities and play to your strengths and weaknesses. Like you can make it work. 
And it's definitely 100%. taxing, I'm sure, but <laughs> no, yeah, we have three three beautiful babies, and we mm -hmm. do things at Poppy that are very different. So I run our creative and vision and brand and all of that fun stuff, and he does innovation and ops and supply chain. So it's it's a really great partnership just in life, and then at Poppy. But you know, it's funny because like back when I started the company. I started because I had some like health issues, nothing like major. I just didn't feel good. And this was back when, you know, people were talking about going gluten free and like doing all these things. And so I Googled my symptoms and I, uh, I read about apple cider vinegar and how it could reset and detox your body. But what I realized is, yeah, I loved the health benefits and the way it made me feel, but I hated the straight taste. And I was like, how do I make this taste good? So fun fact, not a lot of people know, but yeah, there's still apple cider vinegar and poppy, but it's in stealth mode is what we say. Like, so okay. you cannot taste, you can't taste it. You probably didn't even notice it, um, but you get, it's just like a better for you soda, basically poppy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after we got it to a good point where it tasted amazing, we took it to the farmer's market and then I went on to Shark Tank and got a deal on Shark Tank and then rebranded and then launched poppy in March of 2020. Googling your symptoms is something that I have done always, and it is one of the worst things that you can do, but it started your company. It helped you start your company, apple cider vinegar. <laughs> I know. We're all guilty of it. It's like, we all do it. We all know. Even if you have like that, like, you know, tickle in the back of your throat, you're like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And you're like, and you're like, Google, it's like, it's allergies. And you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a headache. It's like, did you drink water today? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's probably the reason I have a headache. Oh, 100%. <laughs> WebMD. Was starting the company ever on your radar while you were traveling or anything you kind of dreamt about before it kind of came to fruition? So interesting. My dad is an entrepreneur. My sister is mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. And I had never really worked a corporate job because even when traveling – I was like the boss and running projects and doing these things from, I mean, I turned 18 okay. and like started working, uh, oh, wow. you know, and went to college and paid for my college through working through summer and like really crazy jobs. And so it was like one of those mm -hmm. things I never wanted to like sit at the desk or be corporate America. I didn't know what that was. I just knew that something was going to happen. And so, you know, and I feel like my husband's the same way. He has a very entrepreneurial spirit. So when I was starting poppy and we decided to take our life savings and put everything into it and when we decided to do that I was like three months pregnant with our first mm -hmm. we just just bought a house and I was like I think we should just like not go back to work take our life savings and and like open our production facility and like just go all in we're doing this and he was like mm -hmm. you're crazy but okay <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like I've, I've talked to quite a few entrepreneurs who kind of said something similar where they're like, I just had this innate feeling that it was something that I had to do. And so far it's worked out for the people that I've talked to. So I think it's a trust your gut kind of thing. I think as an entrepreneur, like there's a little bit of crazy. I know that's like a bad thing, but like you have to be a little bit wild or crazy or I don't know, just off the wall to like do something like that to start your own business or kind of take your like full chance and you know great things don't happen unless you try <laughs> and so no, it's like half, half the battle it is it is and I'll, I'll, like even me starting this podcast or I'm a journalist as well so even doing that it's like you if I didn't take that one extra step, like this entire community wouldn't exist, like a lot of things wouldn't exist. And you would just keep thinking, what if, what if, what if? Um, and even if it doesn't 100%, work out. 100%. And I think it's like one of those things where, you know, go and trying. And then I did this and started the company where I had kids the whole time. I was, when I was on Shark Tank, I was like nine months pregnant literally had I baby saw 10. that I was watching your um the snippet <laughs> yeah and it's like I literally had the baby 10 days later and Crazy. then was back at work with the baby strapped with me two weeks later like I didn't have to choose like as a woman I think nowadays everyone's like oh I'll have to do after this or mm -hmm. I'll start or like you support you know what your spouse wants to do or partner and it's like one of those things where I was like no I want it all and I'm just you know yeah. probably going to be way more tired than most but <laughs> <laughs> well if you're nine months pregnant yeah you were probably a little tired <laughs> seriously 100 percent. 
Yeah. One of the questions that, and I've been guilty of asking this too, just through interviews for articles and stuff is, is asking women who are successful or entrepreneurs, whatever it is that they're successful at, how they balance being, you know, having a family and doing a business. I'm like, do we really ask men that, you know? 100%. I don't think that question is asked to men, but I think with women, like in me particular, we always put ourselves last. So like the business, the kids, the house, the family, and then it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, you got to fill your bucket up. It's so much easier said than done. Like self-care, everyone always talks about how important it is, but it's like, for me, everyone's like, oh, you get your nails done. It's like self-care. And I'm like, no, it's a job. Like, I don't want to go sit in a chair for two hours when I have like three other hundred other things to do. But with a brand that I'm always holding a can, like my nails can't look like a mess, a hot mess. Like, (laughs) (laughs) but I do see a huge difference when I do self-care. But I'll be honest, like, I'm not great at it. That I just said that the other day I had, I got my nails done on Monday and I was like, this is a chore. This isn't something that I enjoy doing because it's just like, I, I know it'll make me feel good after I do it. Cause I love having my nails done. You know, it makes me feel a little more, more put together. I feel more clean, but it's like, I hate sitting in that chair. It's just like another thing I have to do like a checkbox. And it's hard to kind of prioritize that because it's also takes like an hour or two if you're doing your nails and toes so I know you know and then like you look at it from another lens like these are definitely first world problems so we're like <laughs> you know those things are like first world problem. <laughs> such a first world problem you know what I mean but it's like one of those things that it's so funny like in professionalism and it goes back to like kind of what you were saying a second ago it's like with with men you don't really have to like worry about that type of stuff but I think that mm-hmm through balancing all of it um i could be better i should be better but it's like at the end of the day as long as i'm like get to spend more time with my kids i'm like happy so like that is self-care in a certain way yeah no i totally agree and i think you can always go the route of i could be better at this i could be better at that but once you go down that rabbit hole it's probably not the best thing you want to focus on you know so i mean self-care is hard to prioritize it is like even me as like an entrepreneur too it's like i've started my own media company recently and it's self-care is hard to prioritize but like you said your kids that is a form of self-care it's means diff- something different to everybody pretty much 100 percent I want to talk about Shark Tank, though, of course. I have to get into that a little bit. What made you decide to try out for the show? What was that audition process like? So for me, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like when you're starting something, you don't know a lot. Like, let's be real. It's like you've never done this before. Yes, there's a lot of people that start multiple companies over and over, and the second time you get better. But that's not where Mm -hmm. the majority or 90% of entrepreneurs are ever at, right? You're doing this for the first time. And so for me... The natural step is you go on Shark Tank. Like that is the American dream. Like that is what you do. You start a company and you go on Shark Tank. So it was just always this thing of like how and when and can we. And it got to the point where we were at a pivotal point where we had grown and we were needing investment. And everyone always talks about like don't take stupid investment where it's like stupid money, where it's just money and no relationships and all that stuff, which a lot of people get stuck in that kind of cycle. And so I was like, well, Shark, obviously, that's smart money. And it ended up being amazing for us. We went and stood in line and elevator pitched ourselves all the way onto Shark Tank, basically. But it's quite a process. It took us about six months. And each step, it's super secretive. They'll be like, thank you, after one. And then you'll go like a month. And then they're like, oh, you made it the next round. And then you'll do a video submission or a background check or whatever. And And then they don't tell you. And then you make it. And then... You'll get a call and they're like, okay, you're going to be on in two weeks. And you're like, wait, what? Ah, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then the two na- weeks, I need like at least a month. <laughs> I know. And I kept being like two weeks, like but my due dates and three, like, <laughs> but I was like, it's oh okay. My gosh. My, it was my second child that super healthy pregnancy. My sister lived right there. I was like, if I end up having the baby there, it's, it's safe. Got okay. ch- checked off by the doctor. Like there, I would never put the baby in harm, but I think that it was right, like right. one of those things where it was so exciting getting that call that you're going to be on. And then 
you know, we went in, you're actually in there for like an hour, which a lot of people don't realize, like they're yelling at you and ask you questions. It's crazy. And they cut it down to like the best five minutes. And oh yeah. And, you know, we ended up getting a deal with Rohan Oza, who is a beverage guy. He's amazing. He'd done such Mm -hmm. amazing brands before he worked at, you know, Coke and was on the Sprite and he worked at Buy and Vitamin Water and like helped build those brands Mm -hmm. and sold those off and did these things. So he truly was like, literally the perfect shark and then after we got a deal on shark tank he was like look your product is fantastic like the liquid is gold it's so good but your branding absolutely sucks like we're changing everything (laughs) and i was like we love honesty (laughs) i agree no it was great and we 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 took nine months we did a full rebrand we changed the name we went from bottles to cans and then we launched poppy in march of 2020 right when COVID hit so it was called mother first right it was, and it was a playoff of like the mother of vinegar. I was a mother myself, like very like farmer's market, okay. like when we first started, but we'd realized uh, through this process is poppy is a modern soda for the next generation, right? We give people the freedom to love soda again at its best without all the baggage of artificial ingredients and high sugar. You like truly can read everything that's on the back of the can. And so it was one of those things that we're like, oh, wow, this is a soda replacement. This is not like a niche health mm-hmm. drink. So we repositioned as, you know, soda with five grams of sugar that tastes amazing. And it's done very well for us so far. I was thinking that too, because you are branded as a better for you, like soda. I think people mistake it as this is the healthy drink that you should drink always, if that makes sense. Because I saw some comments on one of your TikToks that was like, kind of blew up. Um, And I think people were kind of, some of them were misunderstanding what the brand was kind of about like it was supposed to be a better for you prebiotic kind of thing yeah so I think it is what the consumer wants it to be to them because everyone's a little bit different Mm -hmm. and as a brand of only three and a half years old we still have a lot of work to do and brand awareness and getting our message out there as do a lot of new it's like Nike doesn't really have a problem doing that right because they've been around or Starbucks or like all these other really big brands Mm -hmm. but I think you know it's the, the consumer's finicky it's also depending on what their first touch was it seeing me on tiktok was it in store it was it a friend right and like all that influences what Mm -hmm. they say think or feel about our product and i would say overall it's it's amazing because yeah we did kind of start off as this like better for you gut health drink and now we realized no we're just an amazing tasting soda and oh by the way we're good for you too has been a Mm -hmm. really big unlock in connecting with consumer. And it's like easier to be like, we have a grape flavor, for example, like our grape soda. Mm -hmm. And I always say like, how often are you, do you feel okay drinking grape soda as an adult? Like you don't, but we, (laughs) but we've given you the freedom to do that. Like you can drink grape soda as an adult and feel good about it. We've taken the guilt away. And so once you kind of break it down, like, like, oh my gosh, it makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. I've actually thought that you have an orange flavor, right? Yes. Yeah, because I was looking through, I was like, orange soda as an adult, that's so exciting. (laughs) 100%. And, you know, it's also a great mixer, too. Like, you know, as an adult, you can have fun, you know, you know, with Poppy as, you know, you get that emotional connection that you had as a childhood. Because if you think of soda, right, it reminds you of the movies or with friends or like cookouts or with Mm -hmm. a burger or whatever. And it's like, now you can do all that without the guilt. And it's, it's just like really nice with Poppy. To your point, like orange soda as an adult, like what? This is amazing so we we see that is working and i think to be a soda you have to taste good period the end and really with all all that aside the number one reason people drink poppies because it's refreshing and it tastes good so you know i think we just have Mm -hmm. a little bit more work to do with just getting more people to know about poppy yeah yeah and i think you're on your way there i think people forget that especially entrepreneurs like i expect such quick results but everything takes time and once you realize that it takes time then you'll get to where you want to be but it's hard it's easier said than done so 100 percent. i'm curious too so rohan kind of just got what your idea was he really enjoyed your brand straight away but i feel like you kind of rehearse that in your head so much were you nervous when you got in front of the sharks oh my god at all like because kevin o'leary and mark cuban they're just like icons in the investment world so i feel like i would be a little bit nervous <laughs> you know since i will always, like my husband was like pacing sweating like if you watch the episode he's like i'm so sweaty like why like didn't you help me out <laughs> That'd be me. yeah it was so nervous and of course i was nervous but i think like i was like i cannot go on labor on tv so i actually feel like that ended up helping me um but they're 
let's be real it's a tv show so they would say something and they'd sit back and like wink at you and smile like i think uh kevin o'leary called me like a apple cider vinegar roach and i and you know like that bethany (laughs) was like giving it to us and like really digging in and i at the end of the day it's a tv show um but Mm. but being on the end of that in there for an hour it's crazy but then i like we are we were from dallas and it was funny because mark cuban is from dallas and uh Okay. Poppy's HQ is in Austin now, but we originally started the company in Dallas. And um, he was like, so where's your office? Uh, and he was like, genuinely, and we were just like, are you trying to like have conversation with us? Like, it was, he was like, genuinely, like, so wait, how long have you guys been in Dallas? Like, he was genuinely like trying to talk to us. Well, then someone's screaming like, what's your revenue numbers? We're like, what is going on? <laughs> um, so it is a little chaotic. And we, I always say like, we kind of like brown out where you're like, you go through it and then you leave and you're like, did that just happen? And then you're like, I need, it was, so we got a deal. We went back to the hotel and we took a nap. Like you, it, it emotionally <laughs> takes so much out of you. I was like, I got to go lay down. Like it was, it was such like a crazy experience. Oh yeah. I totally believe that. And apple cider vinegar roach, that's creative. I'll give it to him. I mean, he's so, <laughs> but you know what? So Poppy has broken through on TikTok, right? Like we have 2 billion views on TikTok. Mm-hmm. It's been such an amazing platform. Mm-hmm. But I, I posted a video of me with like overlay text. It was like when Kevin O'Leary calls you like an apple cider vinegar roach and like look at us now type of vibes. <laughs> and it blew up. People were like, oh my God, how dare him? Like not Poppy. <laughs> so we found a good way to like, you know, poke fun at ourselves a little bit and like have fun with it. That's funny. Did he comment on it at all? No. Probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's that's so funny. So when Rohan invested, he's like you said, he's been in beverages for a long time. Did he have any other advice for you? I know you said the rebranding for you and your husband to kind of help aid the success of Poppy that you can recall. Yeah. So I think a big piece of where Rohan was really helpful is like talent. So getting really good people... Mm and good team put in place. I think as an entrepreneur, you're usually stuck in this mindset of like, I can do it all myself. Like, I don't need anyone. I've done it. I've gotten us this far. It's a little bit tough. I think like as an entrepreneur is like your ego and all these things. And so something like early on that was nice is we got a really great team put in place. We're still building that team, but realizing that is the most important thing above all is having a great team. There's really like three things, right? You have, you need the right team. You need the right product, right? If your product sucks or it doesn't taste good or you're having inventory problems, whatever, right? That'll kill the brand. Mm-hmm. And then um, on top of it, being a brand, right? Like not just being a product. So it's like you need all of those things. But I think being part of a team and having the right people, it can save you so much time and effort. And the sooner you let go as an entrepreneur right. and get the right people around you and know that you don't want to be the smartest person in the room is a good thing that's it's hard it's a hard pill to swallow Mm. but it's important it is especially when it's kind of like your baby and you have this vision for it and giving the reins to somebody else is kind of hard I mean as a control freak myself that would be very hard for me (laughs) to do but at the same time you have to realize like you can't be everywhere all at once you need people to lean on you need people to kind of um, foster new ideas or critique your ideas too so it's definitely a collaborative effort that I, I think is probably the key to a lot of entrepreneurial success. 100%. Yeah, it's like one of those things where I feel like I, I'm i still a control freak, though, let's be real. But I love I, I also <laughs> I also love I actually like really love collaborating. I think one of my skills as a leader is being able to get other people to the next level to where they can come up with the next amazing big idea with whether it's a campaign or, you know, a creative mm-hmm. thought. Um, it's like one of those things that I feel like I can push people into like getting there and it's like really, really rewarding to see that. And it's way more rewarding than being like, I did it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Being a mentor is arguably a lot harder than just doing everything yourself because you have to have patience for it. You have to be willing to teach people, weed out good ideas or good or bad ideas and see it through. Not a lot of people are able to do that. So I, I want to get into this too, because there's so much being thrown around about gut health these days. There's like a lot of misinformation and do's and don'ts. And what's one thing you wish people knew about Poppy in relation to gut health? I think nowadays, 
you said it really well. There's a lot that is thrown around. Mm -hmm. And the positioning of where we're at of being a better for you soda or healthier soda replacement is like the goal here at Poppy. I'm not over here trying to say this will cure cancer or do this. Cra-. You know, like I think it's crazy mm-hmm. people do that because at the end of the day, nothing will like there's like you're not going to drink or eat or nothing miraculously will really change your life. It's a health, a health journey, right? It's for me personally, it was drinking apple cider vinegar. I went gluten free. I started working out. I was like, oh my gosh, I need more vegetables in my life. Like it was a life change that changed my life. It wasn't a single mm-hmm. product. So we're really careful at Poppy not to claim anything or tell people anything like crazy. Um, I think that what's really important is having the clean ingredients that can people mm-hmm. can understand. And there, there's been like a lot of studies around apple cider vinegar and this acetic acid. But I'm, we're not linking like those studies in our website and telling people that it'll, it'll make you lose a bunch of weight or something crazy. Like I don't, I don't want right. to be that product because that means you're a niche like health product, right? They only a certain amount of people right. want to drink for that health reason. It's like, I want you to drink it because it tastes good and it's cute can. Like I, that would make that happy enough for me. And it's interesting when we first started the company, even we launched it March of 2020, we did see like, oh, we're, you know, for healthy gut. And it's like all this gut health stuff. And then now what we've realized is like people, yeah, they want something that's healthy, but they don't want to drink like a gut health drink anymore. Like kombucha, you've seen like the the de- decline of kombucha and kind of where that's at. And it's like, nobody really cares that much about it, I'll be honest. And so. Yeah, I don't. I do not like kombucha. I'll just say that out loud. Me neither. <laughs> not my favorite. <laughs> yeah, and so I think with a lot of the products out there, there's like so many ingredients. You're like, what does that even mean now? You know, I think the consumer likes things they can understand. Uh, they like familiar taste, like orange soda, and you call it a day. And I think a lot of people, it's hard for them to get that. They're always trying to change or add or do something. And you're like, don't make that claim. Like, don't do that. Just don't do it. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I know, because then that kind of alters your perception of your brand as well. But I like that you said it's it's a lifestyle change. It's nothing. There's no magic solution. If you go to the doctor, they're going to say there's no magic solution to anything. It's like I've had gut health issues, too. So I'm gluten free at home. But because I'm a food writer, um, it's very hard for me to be gluten free in restaurants. Right. Um, so I kind of control what I'm doing at home and I'm gluten free there. I make sure I exercise. because That's really important to me. So. I think just the entirety of it and then choosing things that are better for you in lieu of a Coca-Cola or not that a Coca-Cola every in moderation is it's okay. Totally. I mean, I drink it every at family parties and stuff, but choosing things that are better for you, more vegetables, things like that. That's where you're going to help yourself a little bit more and everyone's different. Yeah, so. I mean it. There's a lot right. of layers. Someone that's drinking like a big soda brand five times a day, if you replace that with coffee, like you're going to feel better. If you were, you, you've now right. reduced, you know, hundreds of grams of sugar out of your diet a day, like you're literally like, you know what I mean? So I think I love what you said, mm-hmm. but then, yeah, to your point, like when you're going to the movies once a year, like you're going to get a soda, like it's okay. Life is about balance. And right. so I think if more people start thinking and talking like this, it's a lot easier than try this one thing that will change your life. You're like, it won't. (laughs) Yeah, totally agree. I think there's, I mean, I won't like name any products, but I think there's certain products like within the U.S. that kind of claim that. But I think it's just going to come down to individual choice. And that's really what it is. But how did the ingredient process work for you? Because I read that you, was it raspberries that you kind of simmered down and made into a syrup? And that's kind of how you started doing it. What was the process? Yeah. Like? So when I originally started, it was like, I was putting an apple cider vinegar in a big cup of water and I was like choking it down every day. And I was like, Oh, so I wanted to figure mm-hmm. out a way to get the flavor from all these fresh ingredients without adding a ton of sugar in or calories, right? So, like, I could easily mix it probably with orange juice. It would have tasted amazing. It would have gone down just great. But then I added, like, all the sugar. Because, you know, like, fruit has a lot of sugar in it too, right? So, I started off, I remember, like, that was one of the first things I did is, like, simmering raspberries down. But then I realized it made a syrup, which then made it really sugary, (laughs) you know? So, like, that (laughs) didn't work. So, then I moved into a process of, like, infusing it, like, how you would seep, like, 
a tea bag and like do all those things. And like, then that process just wasn't right. scalable and didn't work, you know? And so it came down to just like formulating it in the right way with like real clean, all natural juice. And, you know, we do use organic King sugar. So our drinks have four to five grams in sugar, 25 calories for the entire can. And just found that, found that like okay. right balance. And it took years to get to that and we're still constantly making sure everything's like perfect. And me and my husband still lead all of our new product launches and innovation and still very intimate and close to the process because that's kind of what started, got us here. Uh, And and me personally, I want to make sure that it's still like all natural, like really great ingredients that we're giving to our consumer. I'm curious, you touched on a few points um, that I think could be the answer to this, but what's one thing you would tell a woman starting a small business or beginning her entrepreneurial journey? The number one recommendation that I can say, and it's going to sound like I work for them, but I don't, but get on TikTok (laughs) now, like run, get on TikTok and start telling your story even before you even have your product get people in early, build that community. They want to be there for your ups and your downs. Mm -hmm. Be authentic, be raw, be real. Like don't just show the pretty of it, the process, like people want to be in it with you. Right. And so I think that's a really big piece is people like, well, I'll wait, I'll get on when we're, when we have distribution, right? No, people want to be along for that journey. And like, it takes a long time to build that community as well. And the sooner you get more and the more that you understand the platform and what works and what doesn't and just post, post, post. This is just the way of the world now, and it's a very free and easy way to connect with your consumer, and I still am shocked at how many brands are not doing it, and that was a really big breakthrough for Poppy, so like one day I sat down after three months of trying to figure out what was working on the platform, I sat down after getting out of the shower, and Mm -hmm. I remember I had like my PJs on, and I just told my story in three minutes or less of why I started Poppy with apple cider vinegar to this to Shark Tank. And it went viral. It was like 80 million views. And we, mm-hmm. you know, have 2 billion views in the last two years just on, on TikTok. And like a third of TikTok has seen my face and heard our story. Like that is crazy. And that's just in two to three years of me constantly posting, my team constantly posting, us getting our message out, and nothing's changing. I get on and I hold my can and I say, here are the ingredients in Poppy. And that's a TikTok. Like, people always, like, overthink it. Or, hey, guys, I'm going to the manufacturing facility. Come along with me. Right? There's it Just get people and they want to see the BTS and behind the scenes. sooner you do it, the better. I totally agree with that. I think this too, I'm more talking about my personal journey, but I was like, as someone who consumes media a lot, I didn't really want to put my personal face on videos or something. I don't know why. I just was like, I'm not an influencer. Like, I don't really want to do that. But then after I started this podcast and I'm starting my own media stuff, I was like, I don't know why I've been so against doing that. Like, is it a fear of embarrassment or is it fear of, um, people that I know seeing it? Is it fear of like, people are going to judge me? Like there's a lot of caveats that go into it. But I think once you get over that hurdle of like, no one cares and you're starting a business and you want it to be successful, like TikTok is actually a really good tool to use. And it's kind of necessary at this point. Well, and I think you said it right. What you're saying, it was like when you started something and I think within business, like I actually totally get that. If you're personal life and you don't want to be an influencer in social, like you don't need to overshare, but until you have a purpose where it's like, I have a brand, I want people to learn about it. I want to, like with Poppy, I want as many people as possible to learn about Poppy and drink it. Not because I'm like, oh, I want to be rich and do all these things. Like I love my product and I know it tastes good and I want to share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. And when you have that passion, you're like, it's not a job anymore. It's not a chore to get on and do it. And it's, it's just such a a mind flip. And so that's why just within business entrepreneurs or anyone even building a brand, even if it's like for yourself, podcasts, like all this, it's such an important vehicle. It really is. It really is. Yeah. And I've talked to people who are like, oh, I wish I just did it a little bit earlier. Um, Maybe that community would have grown a little bit earlier. And then they're so happy that they did it now. But yeah, eventually you'll, you'll get over that, that hurdle. And people love to see, even if it's as stupid as like, 
I posted a video last week is like, I messed up the mac and cheese last year at Thanksgiving. And it was as stupid as like, oh my God, people are like, I have to know how it came out. Like things like that. Like people like to see fun stuff like that. It's also entertainment. So you have to realize that like you're taking them out of their day. Like you're trying to entertain them in some sort of way to make them smile kind of thing. So I think that's another kind of not goal. I don't know what word I'm thinking of, but maybe benefit, benefit to TikTok. 100%. And then when when I get to the point of now we have established brand, we, we are doing paid even on the platform. It's funny because we, we'll run paid between, mm -hmm. you know, me just talking about the product or telling the brand story or my story. We work with a ton of creators from influencers to micro, macro and beyond my and we worked with jennifer lopez like and we look at what oh yeah we, did? we worked oh, with cool. amazing celebrities and stuff and we'll still see like me telling the story performs better as an ad than any of that stuff and it's so that's why it's such like a thing where it's a lot of people are like oh i'll leave it up to the young kids to do that but like i am an older millennial mom and i'm on there on the platform and it is working <laughs> like just do it um and you just gotta post and just just get over the fear because let's be real. Nobody like the haters are going to hate and like, who cares? <laughs> no, literally. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. If people see this, it is what it is. I don't care. <laughs> I agree. Uh, have you seen the millennial zoom uh -uh. on TikTok? That trend? Oh, it's like where like Gen Z, they zoom in differently than millennials do. Oh, no. Some millennials are like, doing it wrong. take the camera and then they'll, zoom in with their face like with their thumbs you know what I mean like when you zoom in like that and then Gen Z we kind of edit it to zoom in oh, no. if that makes sense so I'd have to show you it because it might not make sense no, me explaining I, it but it's so I'm gonna funny I'm gonna walk out to my two Gen Z girls <laughs> and be like am I doing it wrong that's the beauty too like we have a bunch of young people <laughs> on the team like I will say like I I edit and post and like, I, I probably know more about like the TikTok world than anyone on our team, but they, to your point, they get like those little things. They're just mm -hmm. like, Oh, I can see the difference. So now I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta go check it out. And, and I love <laughs> having them. Cause then like they, they keep me young. Go ask. Yeah. Go ask. You are young. <laughs> You're young. Um, go ask them. I'm sure they'll know what I'm so talking funny. about. <laughs> So let's talk about what's next for you because 2024 is coming up. I'm curious if you have any upcoming projects, flavors, anything else going on that you would yeah, like to share. So 2024 is going to be so major. We're launching a couple, couple new flavors mm -hmm. that I'm already like so excited about. We just did our first like LTO, which is our limited time offering cranberry fizz for holiday. And it was crazy oh, I saw like that. we yeah, sold out cute. everywhere like the number one comment is like i can't find it and then we did like a Whoa. collaboration with like in beauty project and did a lip gloss and some fun stuff so that was just like a little teaser of what's to come next year we're gonna do like a huge fun experiential mm -hmm. pop-up in january in la around poppy and being the future of soda and then we're gonna go into doing some great partnerships into the next year but and some new launches right like poppy mm -hmm. has um for most retailers in the nation, right, from Costco to Sam's to Target, Kroger, you know, like right. all of the major ones that you would think of. But we have like a new channel that we're excited about launching. And then we just launched Canada. We're looking at launching Mexico. Like so Poppy's like kind of growing like oh, crazy. Yeah. And, and something fun is like we're the number one soda on Amazon. So like we outsell every big brand. And really? we held that spot for like over a year and a half. So it's not like a blip, but we, we outsell all the big yeah. soda brands. So like we are making waves. And so I'm just excited about next That's year true. and what we can do because we're about to start running like cable ads, like linear, which we've never done before. There's just so much oh. runway and opportunity. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. You got a lot of growth. Congratulations mm -hmm. on all that. That's going to be really, really exciting. Amazon is big. That's a big deal that you were number one. I wonder if, um, well, that's also the power of social media exactly. and TikTok, but I wonder if like Shark Tank has a lot of push in that arena because that has such a good Yeah, you know, too. we were on Shark Tank originally and then we've also done an update and the beauty of Shark Tank and Cable is 
they love reruns. Okay. So we're constantly, people are like, I saw you yesterday. And it's like, the, it's still the episodes are out there and like telling our story and, you know, it doesn't cost anything other than more brand awareness. So it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Let me know when the um, pop up in LA is. I'll have to come see it. I'm sure it'll be very colorful. We will. <laughs> You got an invite, girl. I got you. I, I'm excited. I would love to oh, love to meet you in person. Love it. Yeah, I would love that. I'm also um, your biggest fan. I've been giving some. They sent me like four cases of poppy, so I was giving some to friends, and they Thank like you. it. So that's not me just kissing your ass. I swear. They <laughs> no, I, I I know it's a great product. So it's it's also really fun to give it like around the holidays. It's like a gift, like an outside the box, like type of situation. So like people usually are really jazzed mm -hmm. on it, but I am a little biased. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to be, I mean, you're always going to be biased, right? <laughs> you got to do some cocktails with it. For so Christmas. good. It's like, get some champagne poppy going on. We love our ginger lime with some mm -hmm. tequila, little skinny margarita. I personally love our strawberry love. lemon with some vodka and it's like a strawberry lemonade um, vodka. Like there's a lot that's There's a lot favorite. you can do. I know it's, Love you know, I mean, just think of like soda, right? We have a, we have a cola. It's like Jack and Coke. We got you if you want it with half the calories. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I love it, but you know, all in moderation. So I have a short game for you if you're up Ooh, for it. Love it. Let's do it. Cool. So it's like a lightning round. I'm going to name five popular. I changed it to beverage trends in spirit of, you know, your brand. But you're going to tell me if you're for or against smash or pass kind of deal. Okay. The first one, I actually, we already hit this on the head, but it was kombucha. So I think we agree pass. that we both don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, number two, mocktails. Smash. Me too. Three, hot chocolate. Smash. Four, energy drinks. Pass. I'm a coffee girly. Oh, I can never get into coffee. It was just probably why I'm <laughs> tired all the time. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I freak out with like all the crazy ingredients and like, I can't, but my husband drinks like five a day. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, that's probably good for him and his energy and productiveness. For me, I just have to take a nap. So I'm like, co <laughs> coffee, matcha, girl. I love it. I've been really into chai lately, so Smell that's good. been my thing. Unfortunately, it's taking some of my money because with coffee, I don't spend money because I don't like it, but now I found an alternative, so mm. it's unfortunate. Fifth one, espresso martini. Pass. Agreed. I think we're on the same on all of these. I'm like, I'm kind of like, it's like one of those things where – if I'm drinking, I don't want energy to like the people that do like the Red Bull vodka. It's like, it's just like weird. I'm weird with my body mm -hmm. though. I'm like, I either want like a nice glass of wine or like a margarita. I don't want an espresso shot at the same time. Like, I don't know. It just seems weird to me. I totally agree. I feel like my heart would just be like, Ugh. And plus <laughs> at, at night too, it's like, I don't want, ca I'm like one caffeine in the morning person. I love my mm -hmm. sleep and anything that interrupts it. Like, no, no. Oh, I, I totally agree. I Last night I went to sleep. I'm a little sick right now, too, so that's Aww. kind of probably why my brain is a little fucked. <laughs> but last night I went to sleep at, like, 9.30, and I was like, I haven't done this in probably a long time, and it felt amazing. So go to bed early. If you get anything from this, go to bed early. Can. I could not agree with that more. I'm the worst at it. I like, I'm a night owl. I, like, work at night in the bed, and I look, I'm like, it's 11. I have to go to bed. Like, And then you have to shut the computer, and then you have to wind down. So, yes goals mm -hmm. let's go to bed early guys <laughs> yeah resolution for next year i'm totally that way too because like since i'm freelance i feel like i have the whole day and i'm like oh whatever i'll get it done i'll get it done and then i just speed at night and i do all of it at night and then i'm up till 1 a.m and i'm like that's probably why i'm always tired <laughs> maybe i should do my work at a timely manner just night owls. instead of waiting just night owls. i am i just I feel like it's like the pressure of having to get it done at night makes me get it done like better and faster. I don't know. So maybe it's a procrastination thing I have to work okay. on. New, the new year's coming, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll make resolutions and probably won't stick to I them, know. but that's okay. I'm actually <laughs> like I never do resolutions because for that reason. 
I'm like, ah, if I, I like yeah. actually my favorite time to like start getting fit, which is like the craziest. And like, actually like, if I'm not on a good mm-hmm. routine is like daylight savings time in the fall, because mm-hmm. it's like right before Thanksgiving and Christmas where everybody else is like pie and, you know, cocktails. And I'm like, Oh, I just gained an hour in the morning. Mm-hmm. I just need to stick with it. And it's like such an easy way for me to jumpstart. But I don't think a lot of people do that. Um, but I'm like January. I'm like, what's so special about January? But I do love, you know, the motivation all around just being healthier, which I do love. And it's like easier mm-hmm. when your friends are doing it and like all that fun stuff. So I definitely get it, but it's, yeah. I think if you set like realistic goals, then it'll be something like maybe like add something into your routine versus taking something completely away. So it's like, if you don't exercise at all, maybe do it for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then work your way up to like doing it for an hour every day. I think that's more realistic versus like just going into it off the bat. Not for everyone, but like for some people, then they're probably going to do it for a few weeks and then just quit. Yeah, I agree. That's smart, the daylight saving thing, because I, once it hits darkness at 4.30, I'm done for the day. I'm like, I'm not going out. No, I'm a morning (laughs) worker outer, especially with kids. It's like, I have to get up before my baby. I have a one-year-old and he's like up at like 6.30 at the, you know latest so I have to like get up early and do it and then I'm working at night I'm a little night owl so you know my gosh you're fucking busy but you know I thrive (laughs) in chaos I I am you know it's like when things are quiet and chill I'm always like what's going on what like yeah super bored (laughs) how old is your oldest Uh, so I have a one five and seven year old so all pretty little still that's kind of a good age range. Me and my sisters are all four years apart. Yeah. So we're kind of far. But I feel like that's a good age sisters, range. Yeah, I have three boys. Um, so you must be all girl. All girl. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, boys are to- totally opposite. They are, <laughs> but, you know, I heard it's harder now and easier later. So I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think it just depends on each individual kid. Because, like, generalizing it to, like, girls and boys I feel like it's just totally different like some girls are really chill some boys are really chill and then it could be like the opposite for either but I don't know what your experience is no mine are bananas <laughs> bouncing off the walls like hardcore boys and I'm always like what are other people's children like this <laughs> and then I realize no mine are just crazy but it's okay I love them <laughs> <laughs> do they feed off of each other's it's energy so bad like I literally took him to the doctor this morning and there's like this cute little girl like sitting in her chair next to her mom and my three boys were like up on top of like this ledge jumping off flipping up chairs and I'm like screaming at them they're ripping off um stuff off the window and I'm like you guys we've been here for three minutes like three minutes like like get it together um you know and I like brought my mom for backup and I was like we need it we got through it and then at one point I was like is this normal for for this to the doctor and he's like this is completely normal I was like okay good <laughs> I would just cry. <laughs> I'm so I'm used doing. to it though. Like boys are very different than girls. Like very different, but they love their mama, so I wouldn't change it for the world. Oh. Yeah, mama's boys are so cute. That's adorable. All right, so my final question for you is normally when I have chefs on I ask like a cooking question, but I switched it up for you. What do you think is going to be the beverage trend of 2024? Oh, my goodness. That is a hard one because I just – I think question. coffee is, like, the biggest trend for next year. <laughs> but I also think, like, in the space of – there's a lot of runway is within hydration. So, you know, between know, okay. a lot of other, like, powders and, you know, like, uh, you have, like, Prime and Body Armor and, like, all of these other ones, I'm like, what is the next – big breakthrough hydration brand like you know it's like there's not anything in there and there's liquid iv and there's like all of these but i think there's still some disruption within that space that i could think could be really interesting i personally don't think it's some like ashwagandha weird like thing like and that's where you're seeing a lot of things go but i do think soda like i truly not saying that within pop because it's poppy but we are disrupting and I think that up there it's between like soda like what we're doing and hydration is there's a lot of room for disruption 
Yeah, I think that's really smart, actually. I thought of Liquid IV when you said that, but then I was like, what else really totally is there? That's totally right. Um, And then with the soda brands, it's like the big ones that have been around since I was like born, you know? So who's going to be the next to kind of break through that? That's interesting. I'm interested to see where that goes next year. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Thank you so, so much for coming on. This was a really, really fun, great conversation. Hopefully I'll meet you at some point and thank you i hope you enjoy the rest of your day oh, it was thank really you fun so much it was wonderful chatting and we will meet soon so cheers Yay. of course yeah cheers i have mine over there but no, I'll just right. cheers <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey fellow foodies thanks so much for listening and don't forget to leave me a review while you're at it, make sure to follow me at Livin' for Food Pod on Instagram or TikTok or email me at livinforfoodpod at gmail.com. Let me know what you're cooking up this week, which guests you would like to see on the podcast, or tell me your opinions on the latest viral food trend. And in case you're just joining me, there is an entirety of season one ready and waiting for you. Until next time. <laughs>